Hello everyone, this is Diane and I will be your host today for Miscellaneous How-Tos and Did You Know Demo. The demo will be broken up into about five different parts, so if you're not able to watch them all at the same time, then you'll be able to watch them at your leisure. The first section that we're going to cover is going to be the setup, shop setup, and the main screen, the tree, the small aqua area that you're looking at, and then the larger white area the grid. And those are the things that we're going to cover today along with cut, copy, and paste. So to get started we're going to go on to setup. In the setup section we're going to look at users. Vulcan allows you now to set up different users with different privileges. The administrator of course will have full user privileges and they're able to do everything that the Vulcan offers. A power user is the person that can enter jobs, create projects, create jobs, add items, delete those, but the difference between the power user and the administrator is they cannot change or delete any type of shop data, seams, connectors, metals, uh, or your pressure files, anything within spec. They can view them, but they cannot change them. And the guest the guest is just a print, print labels and print report privilege. Of course, if you are going to uh, have different users, then you do not want to allow quick login for the administrator because that would be defeating your purpose. You would want to set a password on the administrator account and you can or cannot on the others. It's up to you. The next area that we're going to cover briefly, because most of this is covered in other demos, is just shop setup. And we're going to just go to a couple of areas in, in shop setup. All your list boxes are alphabetized. Well, you're looking at this screen and you're saying, well, how does galvanized come above aluminum? Well, if you can see, I've also, I've tricked this. I've put a space in front of the G on galvanized because galvanized is the material that I use 99% of the time and I want it to come up in my list box first. So you can do that on any item in your data that you so desire. Just go ahead and put a space or something that is, um, comes in front of another letter if you want it at the top of the list. If you want it at the bottom of the list, of course, using like a lowercase z or something to that effect. As you also can note, there are no deletes in Vulcan relatively as far as the data section. Eventually we will have that probably sometime after the first of the year, but right now there are no deletes. So if you have gotten sample data from us and you do not use a particular material but you have another type of material, instead of adding a new one, select one that you don't use and come up and select the rename. And then just change this name to whatever you actually have in your organization. Of course you can add new ones, but if you're not using one of these here, then your best bet is just to rename. Like all the other areas in Vulcan, they, the items are unlimited, so you can have as many materials, as many gauges, as many sizes as you so desire. The same thing with liners, seams, connectors, all the data is unlimited. We're going to briefly touch on the gauges at 24 gauge. What you see in the Vulcan program for any labor area, any type of labor that you're looking at, what it wants to know is whatever the unit is, and of course in this case it's pounds, how many pounds per hour your shop can produce of rectangular duct. How many pounds per hour can your shop produce of rectangular fittings? And as you see, when I'm hovering over any item in the Vulcan program, it actually has what's called flyover text. It should give you a brief description of what that information is. One other thing to note is your segmenting sheet size. Whatever you have in segmenting sheet size must be, you must have in stock in your sizes at least that particular size range. So what I'm getting at is if you had this listed as 60 by 120 and your only size of metal was 48 by 120, that is not valid. You have to have the segmenting size must be at least equal to or less than 
your largest sheet size. When you're adding materials or adding a size, you can just come in here and add a size and select the Add button. And what it does is puts it as active. Well, if I don't have that 48 by 120 in stock today, I can uncheck that box and that will mean that when I'm using hot rolled and 24 gauge material that uh, I will not be, I do not have 48 by 120 sheet sizes today. I only have the 60 by 120. So that's what the use of the active box. If you're wanting to use some scrap sheet sizes, you'll add them here and you can turn them on and off by the active button since there are no deletes. Relatively, that's all that I needed to cover. Uh, briefly was just to go over the list boxes are alphabetized. Your gauges, we're going to go back to galvanized because on my gauges I do have some, some labor factors. So in essence I am saying here that my sh shop can produce 94 pounds of duct in an hour. So just remember again, anywhere for labor factors on any item in Vulcan is what your shop can produce, whatever the unit is, per hour. Okay, we'll go back to the grid at this point. We're going to go Vulcan and fittings and we'll go back to the grid. Again, this aqua area we call the tree, the larger area we call the grid. Depending on where you are in the tree will depend on what gets displayed in the grid. Now You can see that I am on project one because there's a little paper raised and it's different than all the others here so that is telling me that I am on project one so for example if I just highlight job three project one will no longer be highlighted and it may be hard for you to tell which project you're on but you can still see that project one is the one that looks different than all the rest and project one has three different jobs you can Windows standards just can use the same double click and it will actually plus out the little plus or I can just click the plus and it will break out what the items are underneath one of each and every one of those projects. If I highlight a job or if I select a job then it will show me in the grid area the items that are associated uh, with that particular job. So again depending on where you are in the tree will depend on what gets displayed in the grid. Now you may not like the way you see this screen. You, some of this information may not be applicable to you. For example, I'm not using a description and I may not be using some other area or I may not care about scheduled, completed, or shipped dates. So what you can do is you can customize the grid. Anywhere on the grid you just right click and it brings a drop down menu. You'll select Runtime Column Customization it brings up a little box and in this box you will just drag any headings that you do not want to see on that grid. So I'm going to bring in the description and the job number because job number is also not useful to me. It's computer generated. It means nothing to me. The only number that I really need is the download number to cut, that, cut the jobs with. If you don't use an account or you don't, again, care about your schedule completed and ship dates, you can actually also bring those items down into that little box. And when you're done, you just close the, little, the box. And if that's all that you're planning on doing at that point, you should save your grid layout. This means that when you save this, it will come up in this manner each and every time. If I select the button to the right, Reset, it will reset this grid to the way it came to you originally. So now I've set, I've set up my project grid. Well now I want to set up my job grid. I want it to be different. I want to see my piece number. My piece number is important to me and I want to see it first. So I'm dragging it with my left mouse and dropping it to the left of the box, the highlighted box of item and let go. When I do that now the piece number is pr in front of the item. I want to know the quantity, so I'm going to move the quantity between the item and the material. I let go, and now I have that box where I want it. I can also 
shorten or enlarge any of the boxes. Let's make that a little bit shorter again. And again, just like I did before, I can have a runtime column customization for my job grid and bring in items that I don't really care to see. Let's just say I don't really use my user definable scope number two and I don't care if I've modified that fitting, I don't care if it's segmented, and I don't care if it was processed bad, and I don't care about the ID item. When I'm finished again, close the box, and when you're done, remember to select Save Grid Layout so that each and every time your grid will come up in this manner. The other powerful things that the grid is able to do is you can sort. Just by a click of a button, I can select sort this screen ascending and descending. I can also drop down this list and pick just certain ones that I want to see. I just want to see my square elbows. And when I'm finished looking at just what those square elbows are, then I can go back and say all and now all my fittings are there. I can also do something else and that's drag a heading, any one of these headings, up to the top and let go and now it will group by that heading that I dragged to the top. So I can see all the items that were with liner one and a half pound one inch thick and I can see all the items that were not lined. So you can do that with any item on the grid. If I want to know particular materials I can just drag again that heading up to the top and it will break down all the different materials and gauges so that I can actually double click again or plus it out and see all those items that are associated with the material. When you're finished, if bring it back onto the grid and let go. When you want to use cut, copy, and paste, for example, and I want to copy all of the items from this job, so there's seven items here. I can select one of them and do a window standard of control A. That will select all of them. So now once all of those are highlighted, all I need to do is press the copy button. Now I select a job that either create a new job, let's just create a new job and we'll call that job copy. And we'll select a color and we'll say purple and say OK and OK. And now when I come into the grid area, I'll right click and I'll say paste or I also could have selected the paste icon above. And now I'll have all seven items from the job that I copied from. Now if we look back at project three, and I'm not sure which job I copied from, hopefully it was this import it was import. Well, that wouldn't be a very good test because import doesn't really have any color associated with it. So let's go to job five, for example, and just copy one or two fittings. So let's just say I want to copy my duct. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to sort. And the only fitting I want is the duct. So I'm going to highlight duct, highlight that row, if I can get that row highlighted, and say copy, and go back to the copy job and paste it. So now I have a piece of duct. It's 26 gauge. If I process this job and I go look at the labels for it under sheet review, I can review a label. You'll see that this piece of duct will actually be not the color of my job. It will be the color of the job that it came from. So let's look at that piece of duct piece of duct was piece number 15, so we'll look at that. And you can see that it is actually red. Now if I look at all the other ones, there will be no color behind the piece number because the job I copied from was clear. Now the job color that we selected for this job was gray. So if I go add another piece of a fitting, 
any type of fitting, and let's just go do, let's just do a square elbow, and we'll make this 12 by 10, and we'll say that that's piece number 16, and I'll say OK. And when I go back and process this job again, and look at piece number 16 on sheet review, it should, of course, be gray. So view a label, select the blank, actually not gray, it was purple. We created this job with a purple background, pretty dark. But what you're seeing is that you can keep the color of the job you're copying from, so when you print your labels, you'll, you'll be able to know that this came from a different job and that you can separate them in that manner. So you're, you're using cut, copy, and paste for different reasons. You may want to put multiple jobs together so you get better metal utilization, or you may want to just copy your duct, maybe just all of your duct from one, jo for, from one job to into a different one so that all your duct, if you have a coil line, you don't have to change the locks or change anything that comes up. You can have multiple jobs all together, and it works a lot better. So that's the purpose or another reason that you may want to cut, copy, and paste. Again, you can cut, meaning it'll take it out of the job, or you can copy. It'll keep it in the original job and copy it to the new one. And that concludes.